All right, man, Twitter Talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. This is the 6 o'clock show. <clears throat> Just to let y'all know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am on the run. Yes, you heard that right. I'm on the run. And um, right now, um, I can't say where I'm at. I'm just going to say I'm on the run. And I know I shouldn't be putting this on the internet. But anyway, I got to feed my fans, man. I got to feed the subscribers, man. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, man, listen, Halloween, y'all might see what happened. I think uh, there's some recordings. <laughs> just be prepared for it, man. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and um, listen, so let's just keep it at that. Anyway, um, I know y'all probably like, why did he gloss over something like that? That's serious. Just excuse me. I'm sorry. I'll explain later. You know what I'm saying? Just trust me. I'll explain later. Anyway, today's episode, I want to talk about something that the Rizzer has said. The Rizza, not Rizzer. The Rizza has said when it comes to Kendrick and Drake. And I think this is a fascinating way of putting it. Before I get into that, you know, I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies, put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links is on the screen. Cash app, PayPal is in the description. You know what I'm saying? So look, man, they called me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over, to over. 12,000. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Everybody that tapped in with me, let me know where you're from too. So let's get to it, man. Let's get to it. All right, this comes courtesy of Marcus at work. Links will be in the description. Y'all know that. So let's get it. Media. So let's tap in with the hip hop legend himself, Rizza from Wu Tang. Rizza was recently questioned about his thoughts dealing with the battle. He had an interesting take, so let's jump into that and follow up with some commentary afterwards. First of all, Kendrick is a natural lyricist, and Drake, I think, is a trained lyricist. You could train a fighter, he could be good, then you got those natural fighters. And while Drake got bars forever, Kendrick bars potency was stronger. So the battle... Okay, so that is a phenomenal way of putting it drake is a is a trained fighter and kendrick is a natural fighter and some people that have a gift you cannot train that you know i'm saying some people that have an aura you can't train that aura it is what it is and i think that that's what it is when it comes to kendrick and drake he put that so great and you gotta listen Here's the thing. A lot of y'all might not know who the RZA is. You have to respect the RZA and what he stands for. He is one of the most iconic figures in hip hop ever. He might be number three producers of all time. He literally is the reason that you have certain subgenres of hip-hop this man created a whole world with inside hip-hop and that is unheard of no one has ever done the things he has done for hip-hop i'm gonna be honest with y'all he's got producers and you got uh you got uh, 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 uh directors and writers but the rizza he totally made hip-hop one way at one point they used the element of martial arts into incorporated that into hip-hop the logos everything i believe they were the first people to start clothing too i believe they were i'm not sure but i believe they were with woo wear i believe they were but their movement was global i remember when i seen a uh, wu-tang forever the article that they had in it in the paper in my in my town where i was living at in the paper they opened the center paper wu-tang forever in the center of the paper the wu-tang album in a in a regular paper <laughs> so you got to understand his his take on this to me i respect 100 percent, 100 percent. all credit due to rizza man let's keep it going 
for ball for ball was something that was just not good advice on Drake's camp. Drake is a is a powerful artist in our culture, and you can't take that away from him. The thing that these young brothers should recognize, as you get older, you gain more knowledge and wisdom and experience. So hopefully as they mature more and as humans, they can go, wow, that's crazy. That's fun. I ate you up, son. I love that other joint. My son love your joint. My son love your joint. That's just what it is. And here we are for the culture coming together. That's another great way of putting it. And I think a lot of people... When it comes to uh, this whole thing between Kendrick and Drake, a lot of people don't want them to mature as artists. They don't want Kendrick and they don't want Drake to mature. Now, let's be clear here. I don't think that Kendrick is ever going to be friends with Drake. But do I do I what I what I want them to actually mend this? Yes, I'm gonna be honest, because I don't think that you should hold that type of energy towards somebody forever but even though Kendrick's saying that he really doesn't have any energy towards Drake and in so many words he said that he didn't say that verbatim but in so many words he said he doesn't have all this energy for Drake so I will say that I think it's more on Drake's part than Kendrick's part I think Drake is the one that's holding on to this when he should let it go and honestly that does speak to his maturity he's almost 40 years old and he's still a little more still a little immature when it comes to this i think kendrick lamar has surpassed that that's why he's saying you your 37 is still so showing up as a seven year old because he knows that he's immature kendrick is much more mature than drake we can we can acknowledge that so i understand what the riz is saying when they get older they can actually say i got you on that one i got you on that one i got you on that one that would be that would be pretty pretty uh interesting but let's keep it going so okay. I kind of agree with what he was saying is that, you know, Drake is a songwriter, a.k.a. we don't know how much of that is his actual ghostwriters in himself. But I digress. Let's put that to the side and let's give him full credibility for a songwriter, hypothetically. Right. And then he said Kendrick is a natural lyricist, which I 1000 percent agree. He was just born able to put together words, sentences, and phrases together in a way that is just unhumanly. And it just marks a time in history and in hip hop where they can look back and highlight how good these tracks were put together. So the only real. Now, I agree with that. I think that that I think what he just said, he kind of he kind of put that in a very good way. Um, I will say this about the whole thing with uh, Kendrick um, and Drake as far as uh, the potency of the bars. The thing is, Drake can be really good with bars, but he's a scathing bar guy. He likes, like Drake, whether the, whether the ghostwriter, let's put that to the side for a second. Let's just say, like he said, hypothetically speaking, Drake wrote all his raps, right? Even though he didn't, but let's just say he did, right? Some of the bars that he says is good for now. You know what I'm saying? It's good for now. That was my daughter. She interrupted me. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, um, the potency of the bars, and I, and I think that the thing about Drake is he has a lot of scathing bars. He'll say certain things that will stick out, and it'll it'll last maybe like a week or two, but you'll forget about it. Think about Kendrick. He has moment bars. He has bars that will change the dynamic of the song, change the dynamic of everything that you said, like the like the fuck the big three is just big me. That right there to be could be the bar of the year because that's something like, and then he hit it with the nigga boom. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm bombing on y'all. Like, I'm really like that. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it goes right with the song like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm really like that. <laughs> and your best work is a light pack. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything has a deeper meaning. So that's what he mean by the potency of the bars. But let's keep it going. Like, shots at Kendrick that Drake had that we were kind of questioning was the whole if Kendrick really put his hands on Whitney and if Day Free had a little side relationship with Whitney. That's the part that kind of needed to be cleared up. And I absolutely love that, like, Kendrick never really, like, directly addressed that in the songs that he dropped. But in the music video at the end, he's in that little room with his wife and kids just dancing to the song. Like, that See, that's the thing, man. 
This is why you got to love Kendrick. See, in the art of war, you don't ever give your opponent ammunition against you. And you don't ever agree with your opponent. And I think that that's where Drake went wrong. Drake's biggest flaw was he gave he he showed Kendrick his cards. And, and to be honest with you, Kendrick kind of beat him into it. He kind of beat him into showing his cards because Kendrick played. He played mind games with Drake. It's like, oh, I kind of got somebody working. Do you ever think that somebody be working for me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like your whole camp may be working for me. They hate you. You know what I'm saying? He said stuff like that. See, he had to see Drake tried to do it, too. But it was it was kind of like weak. He said like because we all know that that Dave Free is not. Uh, Whitney's uh, baby dad. We know that, and we all know, we all know that uh, that Kendrick don't beat on his wife. We know that, and if if he did, he they have a really good way of sh of hiding it because there's a photo that came out the next day of them going rock climbing, and she don't look like she was beat on. And I, I, the way the way to me the way Whitney seems, the way she carries herself, she don't seem like a person that will get hit on and then would actually uh <laughs> would get beat on or hit on and actually still be with the guy or still don't say nothing about it. I just don't see that happening. You know what I'm saying? And I think Drake did a lot of speculations, but Kendrick, he hit him where it hurts. And that's what happened. And I think that a lot of people are really upset the fact that Kendrick ain't speaking on it. So why she ain't come out and say, why she ain't come out and say that? Why she ain't come out and say because it's true. Like no. You know how it goes. If it ain't true, you don't have to say nothing about it. Why do I have to acknowledge whether you think it's true or not? You know what I'm saying? Because that's the thing. A lot of y'all want to get people on record. Because just in case something else happens, y'all gonna say, see, she lying. Because if she came out and said it's true, y'all still say she lying. Y'all still say she lying. Because why she ain't been saying? She should have said it fast. And then she said it too fast. Oh, she said it too fast. She said it too fast. That means she's lying. Anything she says, y'all gonna say she's lying. So sometimes it's best, even look, even her not saying nothing, y'all saying it's true. So sometimes it's best not to say nothing. Because if you say anything, y'all gonna have a way around it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not into that pleasing everybody shit. That's just not gonna happen. Let's go. A little subtle fuck you is so amazing to me. Like, I, I am genuinely happy that I am alive and I get to see this in real time. In my opinion, Drake was this close to a flawless run. All he had to do was shut the up and keep being Drake. I knew from the jump that it was Aubrey's best interest to just let it be. J. Cole backed out. Now, I will say this. Do I think that Drake was on a flawless run? When it comes to musically and hip hop, not even hip hop, just pop music or just him. I'm not going to say he was on a flawless run, but I will say he had a, a hell of a run. You know what I'm saying? The thing about Drake and the thing I have to commend Drake for is you have to risk it all to to win everything. And I think that what he did battling Kendrick, because let's be clear here. This is just my thoughts. I don't know if this is actually true or not. It's my thoughts. I really think that Drake knew he was going to lose this battle, but he had to do it as a as a, 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 a he had to get his respect in the, in the culture. That's the only thing I can say that. I understand that Drake do, does is he had to stand 10 toes down. He had, he couldn't back down and and it could be his arrogance. It could be because he's narcissistic, it could be arrogance, but who cares? He still did it. That's the, that's what I have to respect him for because going against somebody like Kendrick, you got to know you're going to lose, especially at that point. You got to know he, I don't care how much confidence he thought he had in the back of his head. He said, this guy, I know he's going to he's going to get me, but I got to I got to battle him because if I don't, I'm going to look like a sucker. And and again, Drake doesn't back down from battles. You got to give him respect. He does. He had four battles, four to five battles. He didn't back down. He, whether whether we want to say he, he is what he is, but he didn't back down. I got to respect that. You know what I'm saying? But outside of that, you got to risk it all. And, he, and I believe he did. And with the guy saying here. He had a flawless run to him. He had a flawless run. But at the same time, if you ain't willing to risk it all, then you can't be legendary. And this to me, this loss is definitely going to put Drake in the legendary. Well, Drake's going to be a legend regardless of how I feel anybody feels. He did too much in, in the industry 
not to be a legend maybe to me maybe not necessarily a hip-hop legend but he will be a legend in music you know what i'm saying but i think that that speaks to why i believe kendrick is who he is why he's a super he's gonna be kendrick is gonna be the greatest rapper of all time after it's all said and done to me right now he is but after it's all said and done he's gonna be the greatest rapper of all time he just he did too much it's too much going on and he's just he has a lot that he can i can argue against anybody but let's keep it going Aubrey could have just stayed quiet, it would have fizzled away, but for some reason, Drake opened his mouth, and this went so much worse than I could have possibly imagined. To end the video with an owl in the cage, when all Drake has really done after um, Meet the Grams and Not Like Us is just like post little weird cryptic memes on his social media, like for that to be all of Drake's response, along with deleting the hard part six from his Instagram, like this, this has transcended from rap beef to just like, like when, when, when I hear a Drake song, it doesn't hit the same. I was at a 4th of July event last night and while they were doing the fireworks, they started off playing that song fireworks with Drake in it. They started off playing it with Drake, like saying his part, but then they just played the instrumental. Because you kind of get uncomfortable when you listen to Drake now. Like, it completely... Now, I don't know. I never really... I'm going to be honest with y'all. There's only a few songs that I think Drake is actually pretty good on. I think some of the stuff he's in. But most of the stuff, I think, that it's just average. You know what I'm saying? Like, mid at best. I don't think he's really a super great artist. I know a lot of people live and die by some of his music. But me, I don't know. After... after uh if you're reading this is too late i kind of think he went downhill from there he really didn't have nothing that was crazy to me that was like oh man like this is fire that's how i look at it so with saying with that being said i mean i can understand why people would say it hit different because kind of kendrick kind of exposed him kendrick kind of put it out there like you just who you who this is and then i'm hearing now that it's certain people that ain't writing for him anymore and this is the reason why he's like kind of stalling with making music. So I don't know. But we're going to end that right there, man. Make sure y'all go follow this guy. I'm going to uh, put his uh, link in the description. Yeah, man. So to the Riz's point, I think that Kendrick does have potent bars. And I think that his music is kind of like it, it transcends and it, it moves throughout time. I don't think that Drake, I think Drake does have certain music that does that, but it's only for a bop and a dance. There's nothing that you can actually take to take with you um, into the future emotionally. It's like, okay, if I want to dance, I'm going to throw this on. But if I want to listen to something that's going to really change my life and get me into a different space in my head, I'm listening to Kendrick all day. And, and you can learn from Kendrick. You can't really learn from Drake. And let's be honest here. You can't really learn from Drake. Now, as far as emotional, uh, emotional testimonies when it comes to relationships, okay, cool. But to me, that's just scratching the surface when you talk about Drake. He, he really only talked about his experiences. And don't get me wrong. I'm sure that his experiences help other people too. And I'm sure that other people kind of can relate to certain things Drake say. But I don't think you can take it as a lesson because Drake went from one, one extreme to the next. And you can't really... Um, I think I think you can't really take what he says seriously sometimes because one day he'll sing rap or sing about this and the next day he'll rap sing about something that's totally opposite. I think Kendrick kind of like he sticks he sticks to the the script and he stays on course even even in certain things you would say maybe he I don't know contradicts itself but he explains it very well or why it's like that because everybody's not perfect and most people do contradict themselves because everybody's not going to always be exactly how you want them to be you know what i'm saying but if you're doing it deliberately like i would say drake does he does it deliberately which means it's a setup it's actually how it this is how it's orchestrated but kendrick is not like that if it's something he says he's not feeling a certain way one day and the next day he's feeling a certain way okay cool but i think with drake is okay tomorrow i'm gonna feel this way and then in next week i'm gonna feel this way not because uh i feel this way no, no because i i organized it that way that's what it is so Either way, man, thank y'all for joining me. 
six o'clock show over i really appreciate y'all all right man y'all have yourself a good night man hopefully i'll be back in the studio real soon uh but yeah uh yeah again man i apologize but uh i'll see y'all soon man peace bye